This simple squamous epithelium, why is it simple squamous epithelium? Right, to allow stuff to move. Do you guys already know, which you should know, but on this side of a capillary, this is the arterial end. The artery is attached on this side, arterial. And this is the venous end. It leads to the veins. We're doing one capillary, not a whole bed. But on this side, stuff moves out, fluid moves out, and on this side, it moves back in. How many of y'all knew that already? No? Okay, so now you know. On a capillary, on the front side of the capillary, it's moving out, fluid's moving out. Remember, the pressure started at 35 millimeters of mercury, and by the time it ends on this side, what was it? Oh, there's our number. 17. You remember that pressure flow chart that I showed you? That's 17. I'm squiggling the millimeters of mercury because I was just trying to fit it in there. 35 to 17. In less than a millimeter, the pressure drops from 35 to 17. What would be the ma main, main, main reason the pressure would drop? What would you think? Well, we just lost fluid. We lost more than goes back. So the pressure that drops the pressure. As fluid falls out, the pressure drops, 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 drops. That's just one force. There are actually three more forces that we're going to mention. Keep in mind when we talk about this that there are actually four forces that determine movement out and those same four on this side determine movement in. Now, I like doing this because it's really, it really is a lot easier than it sounds. We throw fancy words on here and it sounds tough, but look, we have a fluid in here. What's the fluid called? Blood. Everybody agree? Isn't there a fluid outside of this blood vessel too? We're going to call it interstitial fluid. It's different. It's, it's pretty different than that. Similar, but different. Way less protein. It's similar without protein. Let me just ask you a question here. Does the blood have any pressure? Yes. Which way is the blood's pressure pushing? And don't draw this yet, but just look. Out. Does the fluid have any pressure? Which way do you think it's pushing? Oh, please don't write it yet. I want you to see it before we put it on paper. In. Are there any solutes in here? And they would be doing what? Sucking in. Are there any solutes here? And they would be sucking out. Look, one, two, three, four forces we just mentioned. Two of the forces are related to the capillary, and two of the forces are related to the interstitial fluid, which they don't put ISF, they just put IF. So you'll see a C and an IF for a capillary force versus an interstitial fluid force. Okay? You're going to have two Cs. You're going to have what's called a HPC, and then you're going to have an OPC. Let me just make sure that I do the exact same thing as they do. And then you're going to have an HPIF, and you're going to have an HP, uh, sorry, an OP. Hmm, what could HP and OP mean? Look here. Blood is a fluid, correct? A fluid pressure can be described as a hydrostatic pressure. So that's what HP is, fluid pressure.
solids suck. That moves water. That's called osmosis. So the OP is osmotic pressure. That is due to solute sucking. Therefore, we have the blood pushing out of the capillary. That's called the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary. And I want to go back to this. And I want to do it on there, so I'm going to do it down here somewhere. I don't want to erase that one. Blood fluid pushing out is called HPC. The solute here sucking in is called the osmotic pressure of the capillary. Okay, now this, this whole side, let's pretend this right here is just this one half. Okay, cutting it down the middle. I'm going to do all four forces. So this is cut down the middle right here so you can see where that is. Then we have solute out here, which is a force pulling out. That is called your OPIF. And we have your fluid out here tending to push in. That is called your OP. Uh, sorry. That is called your HPIF. So there are your four forces two hydrostatic pressures, fluid, two osmotic pressure, solute. Second. All we have to do is add up those and see whether more are pushing out or more pushing in. So let's look back to here and look what you see right here. Your net hydrostatic versus your net osmotic pressures. So I will tell you and we know this, there is one number that we have memorized. That is this number right here. What is the blood pressure entering a capillary? 35. You guys see that? So since they are telling us that this other hydrostatic pressure is zero, what is the other hydrostatic pressure on this side called? The hydrostatic pressure of the what? See, this one's the blood, the capillary hydrostatic. So what's this one? Yeah, be bold, though. Of the fluid, what fluid? Interstitial fluid. So I like to have you look back here. Here's the formula. Okay. The net filtration pressure. And you, want, you might want to write this down. Is the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary, HPC, minus the hydrostatic pressure of the interstitial fluid. Okay, these are both the hydrostatic pressures. And what are we going to do? We're going to subtract the osmotic pressures. We're going to start with the capillary, OP, and we're going to subtract the OPIF. So get that down. Then we're going to go back. First, we're going to stop here. Oh, that's not where I said stop. Oh, that's because it's here. So what is this osmotic pressure? Osmotic pressure of what? Osmotic pressure of the capillary minus the osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid. So notice how it goes capillary, interstitial, capillary, interstitial. Hydro, hydro, uh, osmotic, osmotic. So we do the two hydrostatics first. Then we do, so we've got the hydrostatic pressure 
of the capillary minus the hydrostatic pressure of what? Good, you're following, of the interstitial fluid. That is 35 minus what? They're saying it's zero. Why are they saying, does anybody have a concept why this fluid pressure is zero? I'll tell you. I think, nope, the one person that listened to the lymphatic lecture might know. Here's, here's why. Because lymphatics drain tissue fluid. They are a backward area for interstitial fluid to drain in. So when there's pressure here, it builds up, it opens up these little valves, and the fluid moves in there. So it keeps the pressure low in the tissues because there's a little back channel that the fluid flows out of, okay? So the pressure's low. Then we have the osmotic pressure of the capillary minus the osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid. Hey, what's the osmotic pressure of the capillary, are they saying? 26. Are they? What are they saying the osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid is? A one. Wow. So what are they telling us about the solutes out here? There's nowhere near as much as there is in the blood. There's a whole lot more solutes in the blood. Hey, there's protein in the blood. There's not protein out here. That's the major difference. So the blood's going to be more. So look, we have these. Hydrostatic pressure. Wow. That's an outward, isn't it? Isn't the HPC this right here? Okay. And this inward pressure right here, the hydrostatic pressure of the interstitial fluid, uh, it's zero. So we have 35 moving which way? Out. And look what we're going to subtract from it. This is in with 26. And what is so that's the solute right here, the OPC. And what's this? The OPIF, which is 1. So there's a greater inward than there is outward. So this actually becomes, I shouldn't have done that. How much going in? 25 going in. So that means that there is 10 more. And pressure, millimeters of mercury, is what it's measured in, even though I'm not writing that. There's 10 more millimeters of mercury moving which way? Out. Right here. So the net movement, don't lose sight of the big picture. On this side, the net movement is out. On this side, which way is it going to be? In. Now watch this. I'm going to do an easy version. Of all four of those numbers, the only one that changes on this side is the blood pressure, which is the very first number right here. So on this side, it would be 17 minus 0 minus 26 minus 1. These are inward. These are outward. 17 out, 25 in. That's 8 greater going in. So on this side, when we look at all four of those forces, the only one that changed is the blood pressure, that number right there. And that allows fluid to move back in because the blood pressure is low. If the blood pressure did not drop, fluid would not move back in because everything else would stay the same. Okay? So I may ask you when we do this, what are the four factors that determine whether fluid can move into or out of a capillary. What are the four factors? Don't abbreviate. Hydrostatic pressure of what two objects? Capillary and interstitial fluid. And osmotic pressure of both capillary and interstitial fluid. See, when you get into it, it gets a little confusing, but you come back out of it and you go, hey, wait, there's only four. There's only four things. Two of them are capillary. Two of them are interstitial, two of them are fluid pressure hydrostatic, and two of them are solute sucking, osmotic. So you put all four of those together and you get it. Then I want you to know the big picture, which is the only one that changes across the capillary. Blood pressure, which is called in this formula hydrostatic pressure of the capillary. The drop in pressure 
across there is what allows fluid to move back in. That's what you need to know from this. Okay? I don't usually ask all those other numbers. You, you, what, what are you asking? 